We've looked at working with the browser and the library and the patches that ship with Omnisphere, and in the next set of videos, we're going to strip Omnisphere down to the bare bones and look at how patches are constructed. And in this video, we're going to start by looking at the general layer controls. Now, I've initialized a patch, so I've got this single layer initialized state that Omnisphere is in. And to begin with, we have the layer page buttons over here, and they toggle between the controls for each layer. So right now, all these controls are for layer A, and these are for layer B. Now, we've seen that on the main page, we can turn the layers on or off like that and we can adjust part level with those sliders. We can do this similarly on the actual layer pages. We can press this little button here to turn the layers on or off. So for example, right now I have layer B on and layer A off. If we look here, we'll see that that reflects that state. So that's another place to temporarily mute the layers. And also we can do it by clicking on these buttons here. Now, normally when we're working with two layers, when we make changes to any of these synthesis engines, they're independent for each layer. However, we can make changes that are linked to both layers when we use this link button. When we press that and it's highlighted, the parameters, notwithstanding a few, which I'll explain in a moment, are linked. So for example, with this unlink, let's say I change, I don't know, the amp envelope. I'll lower that. If we look at layer B, the amp envelope remains unique. Let me put this one back up again. And now if they're linked, I lower that, maybe change filter cutoff. We go to layer B, and those are the same now. So it's a way of locking parameters together. So while they're linked, let me reset this to the default value, and we can do that by command clicking on the Mac or control clicking on Windows, and I'll do the same here. So now they're both going to be at their default value in both layers, and I'll unlink them. Now, the link affects all the parameters except for the following. The layer on and off controls, these are independent, and that works both here and on the main page, they're independent. The pan control, so we can pan each layer individually and that won't be linked. Also the level control, this over here, and again, this reflects the level controls that are on the main page here. So adjust it in one place and it'll be reflected in the other, but those are independent of linked mode. Also transpose over here and the course and fine tuning. Now, before we look at how these work, I wanna talk a little bit about this amp slider. We have these level sliders that control the level of each layer. And this is an amp envelope that basically does the same thing. The big difference though, is that the amp level slider for each layer is pre the layer level slider here, and it's modulatable. So let's say we want to assign as a modulation destination, the amplitude of a layer. We can assign it to this and the amplitude, meaning the volume of the layer will go up and down based on how it's modulated. But this is still independent and controls the overall level of the layer independently after this amp slider. So important to know about that. Now let's switch to layer B and I wanna load another wave into here. I'm gonna go into synth mode here and we can step through them using the steppers just like we can over here. And there we see the different steppers. And let's play a note. I'll step through some different waveforms. All right, let's go with that. So now we have a sound that has two layers, a saw square fat on A and the ARP 2600 pulse there. So we can transpose, and this works like MIDI transposition. Changes here won't affect the sound quality of the oscillator. And we use it to set the oscillators at different semitone values. Like for example, if I wanna put this one up an octave, I can click there and go plus 12. And now we're hearing this an octave higher than we're hearing this oscillator waveform. And of course you see they're independent there. Now we have the coarse tuning and this does affect the sound quality of the oscillator, but it's modulatable control. So again, this is independent of this, just the way like these are independent from each other, even though they kind of do the same thing. This coarse tuning can be modulated as a destination so we can modulate the pitch, but this will overall set the transposition value for the overall layer. Now the fine tuning is used for detuning oscillators small amounts to thicken up the sound, and make it a bit richer. Like for example, if I play a chord here, it's pretty bland because they're both sort of exactly the same. Now if I detune it slightly, it'll get kind of a bit thicker quality. So combine that with some panning and right away you can get a nicer kind of sound with just two raw oscillator waveforms here. 
And finally, we have the tracking button over here. And when this is enabled, the pitch of the oscillator will track the keyboard. For example, let me turn off layer B just by clicking that. So we're hearing just this one now. And as we expect, as I play different notes, and you can see the notes I'm playing here, the pitch will track the keyboard. But if this is off, they'll all sound on the same root pitch. And it's important to be aware that some sound sources are mapped to use the same pitch across a range of notes, maybe for the entire range or maybe for an octave. Most are mapped chromatically, so when pitch tracking is on, they sound chromatically as you would expect. But some, for sound design, as I say, have the pitch mapped across octaves, so you'll hear the same pitch within an octave or even within the whole keyboard range. So those are the general layer controls, and we'll continue with more in the next video.